My dear friends, welcome for today's video. Uh, you may have noticed that I launched the poll in the channel. Thank you for uh, everybody among you that decided to vote. You are going to get uh, credit because today we are going to give priority to the topic you selected uh, in the first place. That is the use of the four cable methods. Okay, here we go. Uh, today we're going to have a look at the four cables method. Uh, for uh, showing you this, uh, well, consider that this is a method to connect uh, an effect chain, to create an effect chain using different pedals uh, and our amplifier, our favorite amplifier or cabinet that you may have. Today, to show you an example, I'm going to show you the probably the most uh, complicated method to connect uh, this uh, to create this kind of chain that is the use of a digital pedal board that is my new x mg30 you see there by the way recently updated to version 5 beta of the firmware so it has some additional functionalities and the let me move the camera the early benton 215 all tube amplifier that is a tube an amplifier that has a very important characteristic that is the availability of an effect loop in behind it or well it doesn't <laughs> the matter is not if it is behind or uh, in the front but it is important that it have a loop uh, an effect loop so let's uh, move to the other uh, uh, picture okay here we go uh, well what you will need for uh, this uh, uh, for today's uh, uh, thing is uh, important to create this kind of channel as I said an amplifier that includes an effect loop you may see normally it's behind the cabinet or behind uh, your head if you have an head with a separate cab <coughs> excuse me and you will see that the effect loop normally is marked is composed by two connectors marked like send and return. Also, you will need some real pedals if you want to create a real chain. That's not what we are going to do today. But if you follow me during this this uh, video, it will be very obvious how to do it if you have real pedals to use. Today, we are going to use a digital pedal board that as well must include a send and return and that is the case of this pedal board because you see that we have an effect loop send and return also in our new x mg30 and this is all mandatory to use this specific method to help you better understand uh, what is the structure of the cable for cables methods, what is the logic that then you can apply on each uh, uh, kind of combination you would like to, to obtain, I've prepared a very small presentation I'm going to share with you. So this is it. You see that uh, uh, if you follow me, uh, there are some uh, topics here well the example we have been creating as we said we will be using the new xmg30 digital pedal board that you may see here okay and the early bento 215 amplifier this picture you may see now is uh, uh, taken from uh, new x uh, website and you see that it shows you very quickly that uh, the four cable methods uh, is named like this because it uses four cables. <laughs> they are all, in this case, uh, mono guitar cables. So the usual one you use to connect uh, your guitar to your amplifier. But you may see that cable one goes from the guitar to the input uh, in the pedal board. The second one is coming off the sand on the pedal board and is going into the front uh, input uh, of your cabinet or stack then the third cable comes out from the sand behind your your head or your cabinet or in your combo then it goes into the return of the 
digital pedal board and then from the digital pedal board there is another cable that comes from the output mono in this case into the return on the of the amplifier you may remember that the new xmg30 only have uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, mono uh, loop effect so it's not possible to use this uh, for uh, stereo effect or something like that also the cabinet if you use a real cabinet a real head as a, a mono input so that's why you are connecting only the left or mono output to the to the to the cabinet itself so that is something that you may be interested in okay so let's go on with this presentation in the next slide, I, I composed it uh, in, um, in, in order to make you understand the logic. You will have to look both at the pedal board and to the combo, in this case, or your head, so the amplifier, as composed, both of them, by two different blocks. Uh, if you look at uh, here, you see that uh, I made uh, the, 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 the arrows, the blue arrows are showing you exactly the same cables you have seen in the previous slide. But in this case, uh, the pedal board is composed by a group of effects that are in the chain before the amplifier. We'll have a look in a moment on quick tone to, to see a real, the real thing. <coughs> and generally, this chain of effect is composed by the uh, the tuner, for example, that is not mentioned here, but in any case is present, the, the wawa, the gate, the AR, here also the amplifier is mentioned, because you could use that one as well, the FX, like distortion or so. Then you have a second block that is uh, the, the list of, um, of FX that usually are meant to be used after the amplifier, because they are environmental effects like the reverb. The reverb simulates uh, the reflections of a room or a uh, or a big uh, area or something like that so it is supposed to be placed after all the other effects including after the cabinet if possible and that is uh, what normally happens in uh, uh, digital pedal boards like the new x mg30 today we will have some different topics <coughs> The, the, the combo, on the other hand, the, the amplifier, is composed by two sections, the pre-amplifier and the power amplifier. The pre-amplifier is what uh, normally is comp can be composed by one channel, two channels. It can introduce distortion effects, uh, the equalizer or so. So it includes uh, elaboration and coloring of your sound and uh, normally elaborates also by... Um, increasing the volume so it is a pre-amplifier because it amplifier the original signal of your guitar that uh, you may remember even if you're using an electric guitar is uh, very low from an electrical point of view very uh, soft uh, very low volume uh, compared for example to a line signal or something like that the second part is the power amplifier that is what is uh, controlling the cones the the real uh, speaker that gives you the final volume of the of the system. So what is going to happen is that, and this is the main logic, you have the cable going from the guitar to the input on the pedal board. Then some effects are applied. At a certain point, you place the send and return block of the uh, new XMG30, and from there, the signal is going out from the send, is expecting to travel through a list of other effects and go back in the return. What is happening is going out from the send, is going in the, the preamp section uh, of the amplifier that gives its coloring. This is, generally speaking, the main part that gives you the exact sound that you associate to a specific amplifier not only this one also the power amplifier has an effect on that and so the speaker we are speaking of analogic system mainly or in any case uh, real things that everything can uh, can impact but uh, the main elaboration is here then the sound pre-elaborated by the, the speed by the uh, pre-amplifier is sent back to the pedal board again here now the 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 MG30 is uh, applying the post-effect modulation, delay, reverb that normally I placed uh, after 
the amplifier. It's not mandatory, nothing is carved in stone in this case. These effects are applied and the final sound is sent to the power amplifier, that is the real uh, part of the system that is providing the final volume, the final amplification and uh, that makes you hear the sound at the volume and the uh, power that you uh, set it in. So, Consider that the blocks of effects, that's why I'm telling you that if you understand this process, it's easy to apply it also on real, um, on real pedals with real amplifiers. The FX blocks you have seen can be composed by real pedals. If instead of the MG30 you have some pedals to be placed before the preamplifier, some pedals to be placed after the preamplifier, you can use the four cable metals this way. But instead of going through the, the, the digital pedal board, we are we, you, we would, you would be going sorry you would be going through the real pedals. That is uh, the main effect. So looking at it uh, in a other more straight uh, uh, composition, the sound coming from the guitar is uh, going into the pre-section of the multi effects of the, the digital pedal board and uh, it applies the effects be placed before the amplifier in the chain then uh, the signal is going through the um, the pre-amplifier of the uh, um, of the real amplifier <coughs> that uh, colors that that, that 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 sound that amplifies it that apply distortion if you have it uh, uh, gain and so on. Then the signal is going through the post uh, section in the uh, digital amplifier in the digital uh, pedal board, and the final complete uh, real sound is going through the power amplifier to be sent uh, in the environment. And that is the main uh, composition of this uh, kind of uh, uh, system. So, uh, if you're interested, I can share this uh, presentation with you. So, okay. What I would like to show you now, now I would like to show you um, what you need to do for configuring the, the, the digital pedal board because of course uh, it's not uh, completely straightforward. Uh, in particular, well, let's keep uh, also visible uh, our our chain uh, in here if uh, necessary. That is something that we can have a look at. So, uh, if you look at the quick tone software I have here. Now it is configured and you can check it by the picture that uh, it is, uh, these are the the different uh, chains, uh, effect chains that I already have uh, in my system. Of course, uh, you will need to make some configuration on the pedal board and some configurations uh, on your amplifier uh, to make them work together because, uh, for example, if uh, I look uh, at one of these uh, uh, of these uh, chains, uh, you may see that uh, there are different blocks uh, available. Let's take one of the of those I didn't elaborate, like maybe this one. You see that uh, we have a block uh, where we have some blocks. Uh, some are disabled, but we have uh, an amplifier, a cabinet, a delay, a reverb, volume. The volume that is uh, controlled by the pedal of the of the pedal board but you will see that the, say, the send and return is disabled so in this chain i'm not using the external preamplifier so the the, 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 the preamplifier of the real amp i'm using the simulation inside the mg30 if i want to use the external one i need to disable this one place it in bypass and i need to activate the send and return you see that uh, I can also select the volumes for going back and forth. We have also this additional option. We will have a look in next video about this because it's one of the new functionalities available with the new firmware in MG30. In any case, this way, as you have seen in the chain I've showed you before, this block represents in a simple way the preamplifier of our real cabinet because the signal is going through it and coming back here. So from here onward, we have the signal elaborated by the real amp amplifier, preamplifier. <coughs> I, how can, can I double check this? If we have a look, let me try and see if I can put it here, at the, the 
controls uh, here of the amplifier this is uh, the main volume and this is uh, the gain if i put the volume to zero and i try i try now i'm uh, <laughs> ringing my my guitar but you cannot hear anything if i raise the volume on the other end now you should hear it that's why sorry stop it i hope you could you could hear it uh, easily in any case uh, it's uh, yeah okay because uh, it is going through the preamplifier if uh, instead uh, i disable this one and reactivate the bypass uh, sorry the, the 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 main the amplifier that was uh, already in the chain uh, and i play it now you hear it uh, also with some larsen even if the volume is at zero, it doesn't matter if it is at zero. You will hear it uh, in any case because it is controlled by the sorry by the main volume of the pedal board. So in any case, if uh, I don't use the preamplifier, the controls of the preamplifier on the real amplifier, so like the the gain and the volume of the preamplification are not working so you're not going to have any effect instead if i disable the amplifier inside so the simulation of the amplifier inside the new xmg30 and i activate the the send and return now that block is replaced by the external one and you can put it wherever you like it let's uh, you need to consider this one like exactly the replacement of the amp section of this uh, amplifier with all the same effects you have the same controls you can increase uh, the the gain if you want because i can make it uh, very simple so let me keep the volume low just to, to make sure so that uh, we can You can hear that uh, the sound is colored by the preamplifier. <coughs> there is another thing to consider. Consider that uh, the final amplification, so the final output, is coming through the real uh, amplifier, the, the power amp uh, of the, that one. So the cabinet uh, coloring is already present in our real uh, configuration. That's why it's necessary also to, de to deactivate the IR simulation in the, I'm referring to this, the IR simulation in the chain, because otherwise makes, it becomes a little messy because it's covering, it's, they are combining, one is applied after the other, and you may obtain a sound that is, that is really different from what you want. Of course, this cabinet simulation can be necessary instead if you want to go in a different, uh, in a digital mixer or something like that, and you don't, you're not controlling simply the, the final amplifier. Okay, one uh, interesting thing that you may have not, uh, noticed is that the volume is at the end of the chain. If I move the pedal board, the, the, sorry, let me try and let you see again. If I move the pedals, the pedal, uh, the, 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 the expression pedal that is used also for controlling the vo volume of MG30, you see that uh, increasing it, I can increase or reduce the volume. So it is uh, also affecting the final, the, the real, uh, the real amplifier. That is something really practical in my use. Uh, giving you another word about uh, the configuration of, of mg30 if uh, you follow me and look uh, at the main uh, options so if i increase uh, let me try and zoom in to this uh, so that you can have a look better on the configuration you see that there is an option that is output mode if you select it the system allows you to select different uh, uh, output modes the standard one is studio direct so it means that it use it is going it is applying everything all the other possible selections what uh, may look the main the the most uh, 
similar to our configuration is combo front. All these ones have the sole effect to deactivate the cabinet, the IR in simple words. Uh, I don't like to use much this, uh, this one. Honestly speaking, now for the moment I'm keeping it uh, and I'm going uh, outside. Uh, but I don't like to use it in my chain because there are some specific situations. Like, for example, if you want to use uh, a acoustic guitar simulation that uh, requires to use the IR. In, if you select one of those output modes, it is practical if you want to use all the simulation and you're using your real amplifier that has already a cabinet so it is it has an ir included in simple words <coughs> excuse me <coughs> but um, sometimes you may need to use them if you select one of those output modes regardless of it being activated or not it will not work so if you if you select an ir um, and keep it uh, activated, it will not work nevertheless. And it is something that you can double check yourself for yourself very simply. But it is something, this is a way of using it. If you simply want to use your amplifier for the final amplification, it is good. You just uh, select the, the output mode. But in this case, I would like to have, to have the possibility to, to use the maximum flexibility. That's why normally I use uh, this one. Uh, as I said, speaking about uh, configuration, of course, not only the pedal board must be configured, also the amplifier, because as I said, what you are doing in the controls of the amplifier will have effect to the, to, to the sound. So if you want more gain or so, if for example, you have an amplifier with two channels, uh, clean and distorted, it makes a great dif difference if you select one or the other. Of course, uh, this kind of combination is more suitable for using the clean channels because normally when you apply pedals, you try to use distortion and other effects from pedals and use the clean, the, the amplifier in, uh, in clean mode. But that's not mandatory. You can, maybe you want, you prefer to have two different uh, boost or distortions one after the other. You can use a distortion, a distorted pedal, but also the distortion included uh, or the gain included in the, in the amplifier. It's up to you, so it's really flexible. <coughs> okay. What I would like to, to let you know, to, to, to let you evaluate in particular with this kind of combination is uh, which are the pros, which are the cons. Okay. First of all, uh, the positive uh, things. This combination is quite inexpensive. What I've shown you, uh, of course, you need a cabinet or an amplifier that has an effort loop. You need a pedal board that have the effort loop. For example, my gear is composed by an amplifier that costs 230 euros because I purchased it be stock and uh, a pedal board. Again, I uh, bought it uh, used, but it is uh, less and less expensive because it's quite old, I would say, even if it is still supported by the manufacturer. And it, it is another 200 euros. So the, 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 the full total, the full price is be below 500 euros and I can have all the effects I want. Uh, consider that if I had, had created this gear using real pedals, the cost would be much higher because, of course, the, uh, the, the, this pedal board is replacing at least seven pedals, the tuner, the distortion, the booster, the reverb, the delay, the chorus, and so on. Uh, each one, if we are using real pedals, costs 70 100 euros. It depends on the quality you want. Of course, uh, <laughs> when speaking of the cons, we will see why there is also this uh, difficult di difference. It's easy to use. Okay, you need uh, different cables. You need to know how to connect them, but it's quite obvious if you remember the, 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 the link, the, the list uh, of these uh, activities. But it is also uh, something that uh, you may find uh, easy to, to, to apply. It's not a complicated in a certain way. And uh, you have the great advantage that uh, all your effects are inside your pedal board. So you have just uh, two pieces of gear. One is the amplifier and the, the, the cabinet or the combo in this case. <coughs> the other one is the digital pedal board. 
so you have more or less the advantages of the digital systems but in a certain way also you obtain the warm sound the real effect the punch of a real amplifier that can be welcome in my opinion for example is very uh, good i like it um, to, to to hear the effects that it produces but it is personal of course it is also possible to use the presets you have in your in your um, in your pedal board with a limitation of course because if you're using the full preset including the amplification amplifier simulation that is inside the pedal board it keeps all the parameters including the gain level uh, the equalization in configured on your amplifier like uh, in this uh, scheme if you use the combination with the pre-amplifier of the real amplifier you need to, to turn the knobs <laughs> you cannot save the position in there unless you compose as per <laughs> of, uh, of to be honest i do uh, as you uh, or uh, either you compose your presets based on fixed uh, configuration of the amplifier for example with this one that is a tube amplifier i have here i'm simply using the gain around the three and then i can change the volume so i'm working with the almost perfect uh, uh, perfectly clean channel and all the effects are coming from the pedal board this way i just need to turn it on configure it as usual and then i fine tune the kind of uh, sound I want uh, in the pedal board. Uh, it's possible to do a lot of mix-ups because consider that in this uh, method, uh, the four, uh, four cable methods, uh, nothing, nobody is uh, for, forbidden to, uh, is preventing you to have both the digital pedal board but also other FH, uh, FH pedals. You can put them in the chain. Of course, you will need also the uh, intermediate connections <laughs> between the, the, the parts but it's always possible it's just a, a, a chain effect there are of course some uh, important uh, cons uh, in my opinion uh, digital pedal boards uh, like this one there are some strange uh, um, uh, strange uh, exceptions uh, but generally speaking is not a true bypass whichever sound is going from through the input uh, through the input i mean here is uh, uh, converted into a digital signal so there is a sampler there is a, an uh, analog to digital convert an ad converter that uh, makes it become uh, digital this introduces two two important effects one a small delay it's uh, impossible to avoid it even if you keep a completely empty chain because this conversion and then in the end the opposite conversion so converting digital to analog for the real amplification is performed uh, and it takes a little time in particular is the analog to digital that is taking time but in any case sometimes it's taken we are speaking of a few milliseconds, especially if we speak about the new XMG30 that uh, declares three milliseconds for crossing the full chain. But in any case, uh, this can become perceivable if you have uh, an heavy implementation or if you are using some devices that are strong. Some people feel it. Some people feel it. There is another sec a second uh, uh, other effect. Even if you turn off every single piece of the chain and you make it completely empty uh, and you keep only the, the send and return or the volume or something like that and you turn off everything else even if it is marked like uh, bypass this is not a true bypass so in any case uh, this pedal board as it is digital will somehow color your sound it will not be perfect <coughs> It's not a true bypass like you can you may have on real analog pedals. <clears throat> it's uh, so that's why you need to consider that uh, if you really like uh, your amplifier, you could lose something, especially because uh, this uh, digital conversion uh, and the fact that it is coloring the code is perceivable generally uh, with something that somebody associated to the digital effects. So it is you are losing some dynamics. 
you will hear that the sound is somehow compressed, your, the tone is somehow compressed, and it is less uh, detailed like, like it was in the beginning, unless you are using very expensive devices with top-level preamplifiers that uh, allows you to keep the wider possible dynamics. But with this one, I can tell you that it's not... I can I could let you hear some samples, but you would not feel it. Um, I can hear a little some difference uh, in real person with the YouTube. You wouldn't feel it because it is compressing, nevertheless. But in the real with the real deal, when I connect my guitar directly to the amplifier, you can tell there is a difference because uh, the the sound appears to be more three dimensional, more <coughs> more colored, more detailed. That's something you need to. To keep in mind there is another limitation you may notice uh, sometimes if, especially for uh, live um, live use if you are going uh, in, a, in a gig uh, you need to, to connect uh, your pedal board to the guitar with the usual cable as you always do but uh, you need to have uh, three different cables that are going back and forth between the pedal board and the amplifier can be not so practical uh, for for the for a live use, especially on the go, if you need to travel to to move uh, to move a lot, it's something to to keep in mind. Um, honestly speaking, uh, considering that the pedal board is still affecting the thing, it's up to you if you want to to use this one. So it's not difficult, but it is can be cumbersome because you have really these three cables that are running through uh, through the the the, uh, the show and so on. So it's not uh, really perfect. So. <clears throat> I would like to give you my two cents. Is it worth it? Well, I have to tell you, there are advantages and disadvantages as we have seen. Personally, I like it a lot at home, this configuration, because I can apply many effects to my amplifier. I like it uh, really, really. I really like this amplifier. This tube amplifier is uh, incredible in my opinion, considering the price. Uh, but uh, and there are some again some limitation but if you want to study to play to have fun it's very quick you have your preset you can select them and they are going through your home amplifier can be this one can be another one if you have an amplifier you can use it like this and it is fine it's, it's important that it has an effort loop and use also the pre-amplifier of your of your uh, system that maybe is even better in my opinion this one is a, a tube pre-amplifier so uh, with crunch sounds, uh, you can tell the difference. For me, it's uh, much better than the simulation inside the, the Nuex uh, MG30, even if it is a great pedal board, in my opinion, I have to tell you. But digital always uh, is uh, not so round like uh, tube uh, sounds, so I prefer this one. But again, uh, there are some effects. It's coloring the, 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 the sound, so when I really want that feeling, I'm going straight into the amplifier. Would I take it with me, this for cable method, uh, in a live uh, situation? Probably not, because I don't think that uh, you, will you will be able to feel the difference uh, when it is going through a mixer, uh, in the mix uh, with other instruments or so. Uh, the difference, uh, I, I don't think uh, it is really possible to tell the difference between the simulation inside this kind of pedal boards that are becoming better and better going on, and uh, the real preamplifier of a two amplifier like this one. So, in my opinion, it is good for the studio. For live uh, gig, I would take with me my pedal board, put it into the mixer, and uh, connect it to an FRFR uh, box to, to to have the possibility to hear what I'm playing. That's all. Even headphones are fi are fine <laughs> in that uh, configuration. So. Uh, this is my point of view, of course, but it is important to, to have uh, an idea of that. So, um, so being said this one, I, I hope I was uh, I made myself clear. I was able to share with you the, how this method can be used for digital pedal boards. And I, um, I hope that you will be able to extend it to other combinations, to real pedals uh, and something like that. In any case, if something was not so clear, if you want me to share some of the contents I showed you, like the presentation or something like that, just let me know in the comments and tell me what you, you would suggest to fix. Sorry for my voice because uh, I have this cog that is lasting uh, since uh, one month ago. So sorry for, for that. In any case, 
Uh, I will uh, again have a look, uh, keep uh, observed uh, the poll uh, to give the priority to the next, uh, to the next video. Uh, in the meantime, please evaluate subscribing to the channel and ring the bell. This way you are notified where is, when there is a new content to, to this. And let me know in the, um, if, if you would improve something. I'm always replying to any comments I'm receiving and I'm happy la like that. So any suggestion, even critics, uh, if they are constructive, say uh, their suggestion for improvement are really welcome. Consider that I'm doing all this uh, in my spare time. I'm not doing any post-production post, uh, on the videos, again, because I don't have time, so it is really an hobby on my side. I hope you like the contents uh, and please be patient uh, if it, there are some topics that are some sometimes I'm a little uh, speaking too much or something like that. So thank you again for watching and see you next time.